My favorite telescopes so far have all been reflectors or of Cassegrain design. Although I've owned refractors before, I didn't quite like them that much. I always thought that the aperture was too small for the price. Also the chromatic aberrations refractors suffered from somehow managed to put me off. Well, now that the planet season is starting to ramp up, I thought that maybe now is a good time to give refractors another go. That's why over the past couple of weeks, I've been testing the Skywatcher Evo Star 90 on an EQ2 mount and today we are going to see if it managed to change my opinions about refractors. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BT Observatory. Founded in 1999 by its parent company Sinta, Skywatcher quickly became a very popular brand for astronomical equipment. You may have heard about Sinta before, that's because they are the parent company and manufacturer for Celestron and Orion products as well. Skywatcher stands for quality astronomical equipment at reasonable prices, or so they claim. Over the years, I've owned a few Skywatcher products, starting with an 8-inch dub, which was my first telescope, a 4-inch Maxutov Cassegrain telescope, a couple of eyepieces, and up until now, I found that their claim holds true. But does this apply to the Evo Star 90 as well? To answer this, we need to first take a look at the whole Evo Star lineup. You see, Evo Star is Skywatcher's entry and mid level refractor series with a longer optical tube and includes four achromatic refractors with apertures starting from 90 and going all the way up to 150 mm and five apochromatic refractors with apertures between 72 and 150 mm. All these telescopes are offered on different mounts with both alt azimuth and equatorial design, featuring different maximum load characteristics. Today I have the EVO Star 90mm with me and it came with an EQ2 equatorial mount. Inside the box you get the mount legs, the equatorial mount head, the optical tube assembly or OTA with a dew shield and a bunch of accessories like a finder scope, eyepieces and a mirror diagonal. The optical tube is painted in a nice metallic black color and features a dual lens element as the objective, which comes in at 90 mm. The focal length is 910 mm, making this an f10.1 achromatic refractor. The 90 mm of aperture allows for a maximum theoretical magnification of 180x but this is only under perfect seeing conditions. More realistically is somewhere around 150x. It also raises the limit value for magnitude to 11.6 and offers a light gathering capacity that is more than 170 times that of your naked eye. At this size, the resolving capacity is 1.28 arc seconds. This tells you how far two points of light need to be apart for your eye to be able to distinguish them as separate sources of light when looking through this telescope. At the front, it features a collapsible dew shield that also comes with a dust cover. At the back of the optical tube, there is a basic rack and pinion one and a quarter inch focuser that offers a lot, and I mean a lot, of back focus. The draw tube extends up to 137 mm, which is the most I have seen in a telescope so far. The optical tube itself isn't that heavy, weighing only 2.5 kg, which is much less than I have expected given its size. Moving over to the EQ2 mount with its equatorial mount head. It's made out of multiple cast aluminum parts connected together by different joints, adjusting knobs and screws. The mount head is connected to the mount legs by a single central tightening knob. The legs are made out of hollow aluminum tubes, which makes them lightweight and sturdy at the same time. The overall height of the mount 
can be easily and securely adjusted between 71 cm and 121 cm. In total, the mount weighs 7 kg, including the 3.5 counterweight that's also included in the box. This being an equatorial mount, it offers the possibility to move the telescope on three axes latitude, right ascension and declination. Also featuring dials showing the exact position in degrees, which is very nice. This is a manually controlled mount that comes with two flexible motion rods to let you control the movement of the right ascension and declination in a smooth and easy way. The EQ2 mount is rated for a maximum load of 7.5 kilograms. That's for the OTA, including the counterweight. The telescope attaches securely via two aluminum tuberings that are directly connected to the mount head. What I love about these tuberings is that they have a soft padding on the, on the inside to avoid scratching the optical tube. So adjustments to obtain the perfect balance can be done by simply loosening the clamps a bit and then sliding the OTA up and down until everything is perfectly balanced. So that's really nice. As for the accessories that come with this telescope, we get an underwhelming 30 by 6 optical finder scope, a basic 2x bellow lens, a 10 and a 25 millimeter eyepiece, and a 90 degree 1 and a quarter inch mirror diagonal. These items are fine if you just started with astronomy, but keep in mind that along the way you would want to start upgrading them one by one with better alternatives. There is no need, however, to do this right off the bat. Get to know the telescope and the night sky first before thinking about upgrades. The reason why I chose this specific refractor is that I wanted something good for planetary observations that I can compare with my trusty 4-inch Maxutov Cassegrain telescope, also from Skywatcher. I had roughly two weeks to test this refractor and I have done this on multiple nights with good seeing conditions under bottle 4 skies. I have mainly tested it with my 24mm panoptic from Teleview as a premium option and with the 8-24mm zoom eyepiece from Sviboni as an entry-level alternative and both eyepieces work really well in combination with the EVOSTAR both helping me assess the quality of the optics and also the viewing experience. Alright, so how good is exactly the quality of the optical assembly? Well, it's freaking great. The image is bright with good contrast and most of all sharp. And oh my god, the images were sharp. Regardless if I observed the Moon, Saturn or stars and star clusters, everything appeared perfectly sharp in my field of view. I would go as far and say that the EVO star offered some of the sharpest views I've ever seen through a telescope at medium magnifications. And I totally didn't expect this since I knew I was observing with an entry-level refractor. The only small downside in terms of image quality are the chromatic aberrations this telescope produces when pointed at very bright sources of light. Less when observing large celestial bodies like the Moon, Saturn or Jupiter and more substantial when observing bright stars. But this is something all the refractors struggle with and you'll need to pay considerably more on a refractor to reduce this kind of aberrations altogether. I will make another video where I will compare the 90mm EVO star to the 102mm SkyMax Maxutov Cassegrain telescope and highlight the differences between them. So keep an eye out for that video, it's going to be interesting. Alright, so the image quality is excellent, but how is the rest of the telescope? Well, this is where the true price category of this product starts to show. The build quality of the optical tube assembly is decent, but with a few plastic bits that sadly feel a bit cheap. Like the dew shield for example and the objective housing. 
It's a hard, shiny plastic that scratches very easily just by pulling out a dew shield. The Focuser is a basic one and a quarter inch single track rack and pinion, which is a bit rough. It gets the job done, but it's something I would consider upgrading after a while. Taking a look at the accessories that come in the box, this point becomes more evident. The 10 and the 25 mm eyepiece, as well as the 2X bellow, are fine in the beginning, but I would upgrade them one by one with something better sooner than later. The mirror diagonal and the finder scope are okay and don't need upgrading right away, but as you are getting more and more into astronomy, these items too should probably be upgraded as well. So, taking everything into consideration, how is the viewing experience with the EVO Star 90? Well, setting up and using an equatorial mount does require a bit of practice, especially when coming from alt azimuth mounts like I was. But it quickly gets easy. So once the mount is set up correctly and the telescope is balanced, the EVO Star can really offer some amazing views of the night sky its speciality being the planets of our solar system. The mount and the telescope also weigh around 10 kilograms in total, which is light enough that I can carry everything outside without the need to take it apart first, which is another plus. I only wish that the telescope came with a better focuser, but at a price of below 300 US dollars, I can't really fault Skywatcher for not including a better one. Now, in order to give you guys a better understanding of what different objects in the night sky might actually look like when viewed through this telescope, I simulated some views using Stellarium. Please keep in mind that these are simulated views and not actual views of the night sky. Seeing how great the viewers through this refractor really are, it got me thinking about whether I was wrong in dismissing refractors for so long. Even though the aperture isn't that big, a refractor can definitely more than make up for this by delivering sharp and contrast-rich views of the night sky. Fact is that with the EVO Star 90, Skywatcher managed to put a very appealing package together. It features excellent optics, a decent build quality and a good overall viewing experience. And you get all these at a very reasonable price. If planetary observations are your main priority and image sharpness is what you're after, then you would be hard pressed to find a better telescope for under 300 bucks. Either way, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.